Now we're going to add some CSS into our HTML email. So let's scroll up to the top. Now in the document we're all starting from, we have a style element up in the heading area. Let's hit a few returns. Let's first add our CSS3 media queries. So let's start with at media, only screen, and, and in parentheses, we're going to put max dash width colon 660 pixels, beginning and ending bracket. That's going to be our medium screen. And then next, let's add media, only screen, and, and then we're going to set max width of 510 inside of parentheses, and then our beginning and ending bracket. Now since we're not adding a min width, any rules that we assign inside of 660 will also be triggered inside of 510, and all of the elements and inline styles on the HTML in general will be applied to all three of these as well. So for these media queries, we're going to be overriding only what needs to be changed for medium screens at 660 and small screens at 510. Now the first rule we're going to create is going to be inside of the max width of 660. So let's come in here and we're going to create a rule that's going to target the table element with the class of container. And what we're going to do here is we're going to type width 480 pixels and then we're going to add the important flag. So what this flag does is override the width attribute that we placed on the table tag itself. Now normally elements and styles that are placed on an individual element will override remote CSS rules. So again, this important tag will override the width of 640 and set it back to 480. And considering we need to use a lot of inline styles and element properties for older HTML email clients, we're going to be making use of the important tag to override some of these properties for the responsive nature of our project. So now with the size being changed for our medium screens, let's get our cursor inside of the small screen area. Let's come in here and add two more rules to override the sizing for small screens. So we'll start with table.container. Once we get under 510 pixels, we're going to set the width to 100%, add the important tag. And then next, we're going to target the TD inside of the table container, and we're going to remove the border. So we're going to do table.container, space TD, and then border, colon, none, and then the important flag. So once we get under 510, we're going to have the design stretched to full width, and we want to get rid of that border that we see for our large and medium screens. Now with our media queries in place for the outermost container, let's come back to the 660 size. Now we're going to target the image inside of the logo row. So let's do td.logo space image. That's the large graphic. What we're going to do is set a display on that to none. Then we're going to target the TD itself. So td.logo. We're going to set the background color to white. Then we're going to set the URL to images slash logo underscore medium dot gif. Set no repeat, set 10 pixels on the X and 10 pixels on the Y, and then set a height of 45 pixels. So what this is going to do is hide the logo graphic and then replace the background graphic of the TD with the medium size logo. Now with that in place, let's bring our cursor down. And inside of the small screen area, we don't need to turn the logo off because again, we are compounding these since we have no minimum width. So the TD.logo space image is still going to be turned off. So what we're going to do now is target the TD with the logo class. We're going to redefine the background again. So we're going to say background. We're going to pick white. For URL, we're going to do images slash logo underscore small. No repeat. We're going to center the logo and 10 pixels on the Y. And then we're going to set the height to 32 pixels. Now with these media queries in place, let's hit save. Let's come back out and test this in a browser. Now when we resize our browser and we get under the 660 threshold, we can see that the logo changes. And if we go down even further, we can see that we get to the small screen size. Now you'll notice that the outermost container isn't changing at all. We still need to make additional changes to other graphics such as the promo tables and the banner graphic. And now that we can see that our media queries are working properly on the logo row, next we're going to target the heading row and the banner row.